The United States dropped 14 GBU-57 bunker buster bombs on Iranian targets under Operation Midnight Hammer. The GBU-57 is also called the Massive Ordnance Penetrator or MOP. It is the world's largest conventional bomb. Now, the US used these weapons to destroy very deeply buried nuclear enrichment facilities uh, that Iran has been using, namely at Fordo. Fordo is a very deeply buried facility in Iran. Now, the US used 14 of these uh, GBU-57s and earlier, it's also used a weapon called the GBU-43 or the MOAB, the mother of all bombs. Now, that was used in Afghanistan for the first time in 2017. Now, the MOAB is a fuel air explosive, which means that it creates a massive blast of uh, equal to something like 10 tons of TNT. It uh, saturates the area with a gas cloud and ignites that gas cloud. That pressure wave destroys everything on the surface. The GBU-57, which the US used in Iran, penetrates deep under the soil. It's a massive bomb. It's 14 tons. It's got a two and a half ton explosive warhead. It burrows under the soil and explodes, destroying whatever is below the soil, something like 60 meters deep. Now, India is believed to be developing two variants of the Agni-5, which will have an explosive capability bigger than both of these massive US bombs. The Agni will have two versions. One, a massive airburst weapon, which will explode, destroying targets exposed on the ground, like military bases, uh, command posts, command centers, troop concentrations. The second version will be one that will burrow under the soil and destroy deeply embedded fortifications, uh, command posts, bases, nuclear enrichment sites even in the future, all of these. Now, the Agni-5, what is the Agni-5 really? The Agni-5 is India's longest ranged nuclear tip missile. It was first tested in 2012. It has a range of over 5,000 kilometers and a warhead of up to two tons usually a nuclear weapon. But now, these two new versions will see the Agni's range shortened to about 2,500 kilometers, which is the shortest range of the Agni. The Agni has a range of between 2,500 kilometers to about 5,500 kilometers. Now, this shorter version of the Agni is going to have these two new warheads, which will have an explosive content of something like eight tons of explosives. That will make it the largest conventional uh, missile tips in the world, the largest conventional weapons in the world uh, that will hit the target at speeds between Mark 8 and Mark 20, which makes it a hypersonic weapon that can uh, deeply burrow and destroy targets like the GBU-57, uh, or it can explode on the surface, destroying uh, targets on the surface, just like the GBU-43. So here is the Agni-5, the conventional versions of the Agni-5. Of course, this entirely depends on what the Indian Air Force... Now, why does why the conventional version of the Agni-5? Well, when the Agni was first tested in 1989, we heard of uh, a conventional version of the Agni as well, which could destroy targets at extended ranges uh, because India didn't have a bomber fleet. It still does not have a fleet of bombers like the B-1, the B-2 and the B-52, which can carry ordnance like this to extended distances. And you have targets in Pakistan uh, and especially in China, which are deeply buried below the soil, uh, which um, have command posts, nuclear uh, bunkers, all of those buried deep under the soil, for which you will need specialized weapons uh, like this conventionally armed Agni-5. And we saw this being used in combat very recently uh, when the Russian Federation just last year in 2024 tested a weapon called the Oreshnik, which is an intermediate range ballistic missile converted to a conventional use, a hypersonic weapon which is practically difficult to intercept or destroy. We saw that being used to take out a very high value Ukrainian target. So the Agni-5 is a very, very capable intermediate range ballistic missile converted to a conventional weapon, uh, which possibly be extremely difficult to intercept and which actually 
positions itself as a very, very important tool for India's warfighters as they approach these buried targets, uh, fortified uh, targets well into the future when you're looking at China and Pakistan.